to the Blythe Valley Samba Band and to Drummed In from No Tyneside. That's fantastic. Fantastic to have that happy music. There's so much about what we hear about the NHS is bad news, but actually so much good and so much happiness actually happens around the, around the NHS and we mustn't forget that when we're campaigning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This rally has been called by eight of the local health campaigns, Keep Our NHS Public uh, campaign groups which you'll hear from later, and the People's Assembly and a big wide range now of trade union and political groups and community organisations. So what do we stand for? We stand for an immediate and sustained cash injection to restore the NHS budget. Yeah. We can afford it. It's a political decision not to, to fund. We need to have an increased commitment to funding and an NH, end on the NHS pay cut. We need and we demand right now an end to cuts, driven cuts on the NHS. And um, you'll hear from South Tyneside soon. They've managed to at least halt at the moment some of the cuts that are happening there. Well, it's South but it's, it's about cash and it's not about care. We want to see a halt on the imposition of the new models of care and accountable care. They're using language which means one things in fake news to try and convince you that good things are happening. It's about cuts and it's about cuts in services. And the other thing that's important and sounds boring, but is essential, is the repeal of the 2012 Health and Social Care Act. Um, and that is essential, and we need to get all of our MPs across the country supporting that and understanding why. Yes. Right, I'm going to hand over now to Keith Venables, who's the leader of Keep Our NHS Public um, uh, Nationally. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. On step, on step, okay. My name's Keith Venables, I'm the National Secretary of Health Campaigns Together, and it's great to be back in the North East again. I loved working here in the old days when I used to be a psychologist in this area. So thank you for inviting me. The question is, who's NHS? I'm only interested in how we're going to win. That's what matters. Our fight is to save our NHS. We want a Bevanite NHS with no cuts or cash closures. Fair, okay, fair, we want better microphones. Fair pay to all NHS staff and a fully funded, universal, publicly owned and publicly provided national health service. That's what we want, isn't it? It's great to have big demos like this, but we need to do more. We need to tip the balance of power in our favour at every level, even if it means getting rid of this government and reinstating the NHS. Who's NHS? Our NHS! Since 2010, this government have put in place measures to privatise and underfund our NHS by £22 billion. They and companies like Virgin Care are determined to have their way and we plan to stop them. Okay, so what do we do? Health Campaigns Together was set up in late 2015 to respect the hundreds and hundreds of groups across England like this one, organising protests, lobbies, teachings. So we set up as a Health Campaigns Together alliance which every group can affiliate to, and many have. What have we learned? We've learned some ways we can win. Firstly, to tell the public in every single way we can. That's number one. Tell people what is going on. Secondly, to respect health workers and their unions, caterers, doctors, cleaners, nurses, to form alliances with everyone we can. Health campaign has local and national affiliations from nearly all health unions and others such as the Fire Brigade Union, who go on demonstrations and they say, we save lives, not banks. And one of the teachers unions, health workers hold our NHS together, despite all the cutbacks. We need to all join together in solidarity. So I'd be at least one of many rounds of applause today for all of our health workers. Thirdly, we need to vigorously challenge 
all those who make decisions, local councils, commissioning groups, MPs, especially vulnerable marginal seats, and of course the government. We want victories, like at least the struggle that been partly successful in South Tyneside the last few days. So what is happening? Who caused this crisis? It's caused by underfunding and fragmentation, marketization. Professor Stephen Hawking says, the crisis in the health service has been created by politicians who want to privatize it. When public opinion and the evidence point in the opposite direction. On the one hand, he says, there's the force of the multinational companies driven by their profit motive, pushing towards US style private health care for those who can afford it, not me. Instead, we need our loud voices and the political power to make changes. What they've done includes across the country, there are eight thousand front leg beds empty, two thousand mental health beds are closed, yet there are a hundred thousand vacancies amongst all health workers, almost health. Just take virgin care, please do take virgin care somewhere and stick them somewhere. In Surrey, they sued six commissioning groups because they didn't get their way. It cost the NHS, that's us, two million pounds. But we are building a mighty movement and we are fighting back. Last month in Lancashire, a judge blocked Virgin Care from taking over children's services because it would disrupt clinical pathways. That's about health and care and education and social care. That's what we're fighting for, that's what we're against. This is a victory for us and we must fight to make more. In Lewisham, in London, a campaign petition turned around a council decision to cut children's mental health. Another victory for us. The Tories have amplified the commission provider split and pushed forward legislation recently to bring in faster privatisation. The latest version of this nonsense is called unaccountable care organisations or integrated care organisations. But protesters like us and their judicial review and the Labour Party in opposition have made them put a temporary pause on its implementation. So there's another victory. So despite the crushing power of this government, there are more victories. Take Jatsworth, for example, in Mansfield, the re in Nottinghamshire. The rehabilitation ward there set in position a campaign with campaigners and staff and patients. They insisted the campaigners, the managers met actually in the ward and the campaign stopped the closure. So I'm saying we're not here to moan, we're here to organise and win. We challenge every level of decision making every time from council health and well-being to commissioner groups and MPs. We'll work with Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party because we often can these days and we need to replace this government and we will. Who's NHS? It's really important, as I conclude, to build local and national alliances and HCT health campaigns together has strong connections with Unison, with Unite, with the TUC and other health unions. We have, have a look, a brilliant website. It is really good, have a look at it. Just says health campaigns together, as does our sister organisation, Keep Our NHS Public. They're both really good. And a really champion quarterly newspaper. So have a look at that. Don't forget our London national demonstration on the 70th birthday or just after of our NHS. That's going to be the 30th of June. I'm, I'm a northerner and I don't always feel that keen to go to London to demos. I'd rather we did this across the country, which we can and we do. And I'm sure most of you agree with me about that. But I am campaigning for the 30th of June to be a big national demonstration. And to finish, Jeremy Hunt is losing control. They are. They're losing it. And this weak and vulnerable government can be replaced. 
We will fight and we will win. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. A big round of applause for Keith. Thank you. Who's your next yes? Who's your next yes? Thank you. A big round of applause also to Drumjin and to the Blythe Valley Samba Band who are going to sing. Give another round of applause there, please. Thank you. Our next week, I'm glad to see the South South Tyneside Hospital campaign there in the middle there because yesterday, as you already heard, they won a fantastic victory when the Health and Scrutiny Committee referred, repealed their STP plan and referred it back. So our next speaker has been central to that campaign and part I came from the very beginning. Please give a big hand to Emma Lewell Book MP. Thank you. Thanks very much everyone for being here today. I also want to say a special thank you to our hard working, dedicated NHS staff, the porters, the cleaners, the nurses, the GPs, surgeons and consultants and every single person who works tirelessly every day to make our NHS the envy of the world. The Tories are presiding over privatisation by stealth of our NHS. Our chair. Is that better? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. How about that? Yeah, all right then. Okay, the Tories are presiding over privatisation by stealth of our NHS. This February has been the worst ever on record for our NHS. e, &E performance fell to its lowest level. Our amazing NHS staff are having to constantly apologise to patients for a disaster that's not of their own making. This government are removing services and closing hospitals up and down the country. They are farming out services to the private sector under wholly owned subsidiaries or planned accountable care organisations. The number of patients waiting more than 12 hours in a &E has risen by 2,700%. There are 6 million fewer bed spaces, over 5,000 less mental health nurses, and over 100,000 nurses have quit in the last year. Then to add insult to injury, just this week, our hard-working nurses have been told, if you want your pay rise, Make sure that you don't lose your holiday leave as well. This government is wasting precious finances on reorganisation and fighting corporate legal battles, such as Virgin suing the NHS because it lost out on a bid to provide private health care. I've got a message for you, Mr. Branson. Our NHS is not for profit. If you don't like it, go and sit on your tax-free island and take a long, hard look at yourself. <laughs> Many of you, yeah. <laughs> Many of you here today will know of our campaign in South Tyneside. But what lots of you won't know is how brave some of the staff have been who've come to me, Gemma, and Roger, putting their own jobs in jeopardy. Working under the subtle implied threat that if they join our campaign, share information with us, then their jobs are on the line. To them, you are the true heroes of this. Their bravery and their sheer force of people power we have in South Tyneside led to yesterday's vote of no confidence in our local health leaders. The fight for South Tyneside Hospital, though, is a fight for all of us. No hospital is safe under this government's watch. There is an end game here, and the end game is where our NHS no longer exists. What we need is a Labour government and Jeremy Corbyn in number 10. So we can halt the privatisation, so we can repeal the Health and Social Care Act and put patients once again before profit. Labour created the NHS. It's our proudest achievement. Universal health care for all on the basis of need and free at the point of use, no matter where you are or where you're from. I want to just end by paying tribute to all of the campaigners across the country fighting for our NHS. But I want to say special thanks 
to Gemma and Roger, who are leading the Save South Tyneside Hospital campaign. We are currently raising funds for a potential judicial review. Please help us, please donate to us, because this process does not begin and end with South Tyneside Hospital. Do not think your hospital is safe. This rotten government are coming for our entire NHS. Thank you. I'm going to introduce now some, some stars of stage and screen who readily agreed to come and speak. And that's just so impressive that people who are publicly known are happy to stand up and speak out about public services. Um, they've been currently appearing in art at the Theatre Royal. We've now got Stephen Tompkinson, born in Stockton on Tees. Star of Brastoff, don't know about you, but I cry all the way through. And Dennis Lawson, originally in Star Wars, but also in Local Hero. They wanted to come here and speak about the NHS. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Just want to mention about the underfunding. The underfunding of the NHS is a political decision that has resulted on huge pressure being placed on all NHS staff who are desperately trying to keep services going. And for patients, there are longer waits for GP appointments, hours spent lying on trolleys in hospital corridors, rationing of treatments, and avoidable deaths. The NHS staff work hard. The problem is underfunding and cuts. The sustainability and transformation plans, which the government and local clinical commissioning groups are trying to introduce, will lead to further cuts, closures, and privatisation. STP doesn't stand for Sustainability and Transformation Plan. We believe that it stands for Slash, Trash and Privatise. We're extremely concerned and worried about the local clinical commissioning group recommendation to transfer some very busy health departments from South Tyneside General Hospital to the General Hospital in Sunderland. People will have to travel miles for treatment and many people can't afford this. We're also concerned that there are plans to close the one and only inpatient ward at Rothbury College Hospital, a rural community in Northumberland. Now I'm going to ask my mate Dennis to tell you about the Accountable Care Organisations. Thanks for listening. Hello, everybody. Just delighted to be in Newcastle. Hang on one second. So... There is no public mandate for the plans the Tories are pursuing. No one voted for accountable care organisations, ACOs, and they are not accountable. They will lead to privatisation. It's really great news that the crowdfunder, initiated by Professor Alison Pollock in Newcastle and backed by Stephen Hawking, has enough support to go ahead with a legal challenge. We hope this goes well and we support it. That challenge makes clear to the government that their plans do not reflect the public opinion where NHS is concerned. They are not doing this in our name. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis, local hero. And thank you to Stephen, also a local hero as well. Thank you. Big, big round of applause to the two of them for coming down today. And uh, they're in a fantastic show called Art at the Theatre Royal. If you haven't seen it, it's a fantastic show. It's a comedy. It's brilliant. Get along and see it if you haven't done that already. Okay. It's fantastic that everybody is here today, particularly a couple of days back. We had International Women's Day this week. Very important. Very important because we know that the NHS relied so much on women over the years and I'm really, really pleased that our next speaker is the Regional Secretary of Unison which represents so many of the women that we work in the NHS. Thank you, Claire. Um, thanks very much. It's absolutely fantastic to be here today and to see so many other people and of course to have famous faces joining us and the importance of that is getting the message out of what this Tory government is doing with our NHS and indeed all of our public services. The reality is that the Tories have 
have been lying year on year. They are not funding the NHS and we're now seeing the impact of their political decisions. And that impact is actually waiting lists getting longer, demand rising, people not being able to get treatment, treatment for cancer and a whole range of other things. And what do this government do? They have the audacity and the shame to blame the NHS staff and it's an outrage that they do that. And we need to make it clear to them, we need to make it clear to them that we will not join them in their campaign of trying to demolish the NHS by underfunding it, running it down, making sure that there's not enough staff because they want to charge nurses and other staff to do training. And we also need to make sure that we call them out on what their strategy is. Because it's very simple. Underfund it. Underfund it. Run it down. Say it's not delivering. And then hand it over to Richard Branson and his cronies so they can make massive profit. And we're right to boo them. The man cannot even run the trains for goodness sake. And they're giving him our NHS. I tell you as well, talk to the staff in Carillion in Middlesbrough Hospital. Some of the lowest paid people doing some of the most important jobs like keeping hospitals clean for people to use. And through no fault of their own, they don't know now if they've got a job. And if they do have a job, their wages might be cut. They don't know if they're going to get their pensions contributions. But I tell you what we do know, the shareholders from Carillion, shored up by this Tory government, have taken over a million pounds out. Their pensions aren't under threat. Their wages aren't under threat. It is not right. And that's why it's so important that we have events like this. And as has previously been said, we all come together. Trade unions, uh, all public sector workers, and everyone in our communities. Everyone at some point in their lives and in our own lives will need to use the NHS. Let's make sure it's there. This year it's the 70th anniversary of the NHS in July. Let's make sure we tell this government we're not going to let them privatise it. We're going to fight them. We're going to get Labour in. And the NHS belongs to us, not to them. Thanks very much and keep up the good work. Who's NHS? Now we're going to see the back of these two. We'll thank Louise, our patient, Gareth and Martin, for providing us with some fun, but we want to see the back of them. So let's have a countdown to see the back of Hunt, Branson and the like. So come on then. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good round! Thank you so much. Our next speaker, we're going to have a whole number of short speeches from all of the people who contributed um, to this rally and who care passionately. Sarah Carpenter is next, who's the National Officer of the Unite Health Branch. Hello. I'm really proud to be standing in front of you today as Unite's Head of Health, bringing you greetings and the heartfelt thanks from Unite members, not only in the North East, but across the UK. We thank you for standing up for the NHS that thousands of our members work in and all of our members use. Without your passion and your determination, the fight to save our NHS would have been lost long ago. And be in no doubt that it is a fight. Every day we are hearing new stories of attempts to reduce services, to attack the professionalism of our members, and to privatise our NHS. In this year, of all years, 70 years since the NHS was born, we have seen the growth of some of the very sneakiest attacks on services and workers in the form of wholly owned subsidiaries. This is where NHS staff are moved over to companies that are effectively a tax dodge for cash-strapped NHS trusts. They are told it's happening to save the NHS money. 
Well, we know that this is just a continuation of what Unite has always called slash, trash and privatise. And we will fight these plans wherever they rear their heads. And because of the excellent work done by local campaign groups, we know that you will be right alongside us, defending staff and defending services. The NHS cares for us all, from the cradle to the grave. It is being held together from the inside by the dedication and determination of its staff, whilst being under continual attack from a government that fundamentally wants to destroy it. And that is why we have fought, why we fight now, and why we will always fight for our NHS. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. It's fantastic to have our trade unions here, Unite and the Unison represented. They represent so many workers. And if you're not in a trade union, join one now, please. While we're here today, there are some sign-up sheets at the front here because today isn't the end. As you know, we keep on campaigning. We're going to keep on campaigning until the NHS does belong back to us. But there is going to be a national demonstration on the birthday of the NHS on 30th of June down in London. And we want everybody here to join us to get down there to make sure there are millions of people on the street. So if you have already left us your contact details some way or other, please, during the course of the rally, can you make your way forward and leave your contact details on the sheet at the front here. Our next speaker is somebody who's very, very important because he, another person who represented nurses is the chair of the Royal College of Nurses in the Northern Regional Board, Michael Appleby. Give him a big round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not a politician. Uh, uh, I'm not a, a celebrity. I'm a nurse. And on behalf of all nurses, thank you very much for being here just today and supporting us. As the Royal College of Nursing, as you may know, we represent nurses across the whole of the Northern Region and the Cumbria. And on behalf of every nurse and every other healthcare professional, thank you very much for supporting us today. It's great to see you all here today. We all know that the NHS is under massive strain at the present moment in time, and my colleagues on the front line are actually struggling to deal with the strain that they're doing. They want to deliver high quality care, but are working 13 hours without any breaks, even leaving born home crying because they know that they haven't probably delivered the best care that they should have done because they haven't had the time or the resources to do that. Our NHS is under a massive attack, and believe me, from inside, it is under massive attack, and we know it is. So thank you very much for being here today. We also know that in England alone, there are 40,000 vacancies for nurses within England alone. This government needs to stand up and realise that they need to invest in the NHS and they need to invest in the healthcare and nurses. We know that it needs to happen now. So once again, on behalf of the Royal College of Nursing, thank you for being here and thank you for supporting this event. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for the midwives, cradle to grave care in the NHS. Barbara's here in her nurse's uniform. Yay! And for one very, very important nurse in the NHS who has campaigned tirelessly all of her working life and before whose birthday it is today, we wondered if we wanted to sing happy birthday to Maddie Nettleship. completely embarrassed, but we need to keep your energy up as well. So a quick burst of happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marie. Happy birthday to you. Speech, speech. Tireless, tireless. You can't be better way to spend your birthday than to be here for the NHS. Man is always, always thought and was a brilliant nurse. So, so our next speaker, speaker, if I remember his name, is Jeff Abbott from Stand Up To Racism. After these rallies, there are two events that are going to happen. There's a question and answer session with people on NHS Public at Brunswick, but Stand Up To Racism North East has also got an event in the Art Centre. There'll be warm drinks for everybody. Please, please attend those as well. But Jeff Abbott from Stand Up To Racism. Thank you very much and thank you very much for inviting me. And there was something horrific happened last Sunday in the elections in Italy. 
the, uh, uh, the, the, all the parties were standing on a platform of anti-immigration, against immigration. And as we know, in the NHS, immigration is absolutely crucial. Immigrants actually keep the NHS going. So we have to fight this. We have to fight this racism that's going on and that's spreading around. Um, also, the, the, uh, also the, the issue is uh, that all the paper, newspapers like the Daily Mail will go on about health, tourism, etc. We know that that is an absolute drop in the ocean. What, they, what they're trying to do is divert attention away from privatisation. Now, how do we fight privatisation? I've got to say, I'm also a UCU member, and I'm a striking UCU member. We've been on strike now for 14 days. We've had rolling strikes. We had two days first week, three days the second week, four days in the third week, and now the vice chancellors are crumbling. We've got them on the run. They're falling down. We will win. We're going to defend our pension. And I'll tell you a secret. That is the way to fight privatisation because that is exactly what is happening in universities now. We need to take industrial action and we need to fight hard. And we've shown that if you have a serious campaign of industrial action, you can win. And I'll come down to our picket lines tomorrow. We've got teach outs about all sorts of subjects in the Hotspur pub between 11 and 1. The a picket line is absolutely electrifying, it's a fantastic thing, it's a beautiful thing, so come down and support us, and we are going to win. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, UCU, and our next speaker is another uh, a fighter for the NHS, uh, and the Keep Our NHS, we've got Keep Our NHS groups all around the region. Uh, give a big hand, please, to Nigel Spate from Keep Our NHS Durham. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a doctor. I'm still working in the NHS. And it's been an absolute privilege and pleasure to work in the NHS for 40 years and to never, to never have to worry about whether the patient I'm seeing has got insurance or is paid enough or is covered by Richard Branson's contract. And I, I would hate to work in any other system. Oh, I want to pose a question. Why aren't people more indignant? Why aren't all these people who could be listening to these talks carrying on with their shopping? And the trouble is, healthy people don't think they need the NHS. And the even bigger problem is, when they fall ill, they're still getting an incredible service. So they're very grateful. Now you know that the older age group are predominantly voting Tory. Many of you here will have parents, some of you may have grandparents, and about 70% of them vote Tory. I want you to tell them, however grateful they are for their latest hip replacement, things are much too serious for them to carry on, and that they have to give up the habits of a lifetime and stop voting Tory. And then we can possibly get rid of this incompetent, mean-spirited, hard-right, ideological government, which is worse even than Thatcher's. Thank you. We've got lots of messages of support from people, so we're going to try and read some of these short ones out. From Shirley Ford, the coordinator of North East Green Party. We demand that all the changes of the last 25 years are scrapped. The internal and external market, the PFI deals, the privatisation and the cuts to services, beds and staff. We totally oppose STPs and ACOs that are simply a way of trashing our NHS and replacing it with an American style system where if you have the money you can get healthcare and if you can't, tough. As well as fighting each and every local battle from Rossby to South Tyneside to Hartlepool, Greens are lobbying every MP who has not done so to sign up to support the NHS reinstatement bill. We want our NHS back, and that's the best way to do it. That's from Shirley Ford and the North East Green Party.
Tom Wally, who I'd like you to give a huge cheer for, who's organised and worked tirelessly to get not just this rally off the ground, but many of the work that NHS Public in the North East does. So big cheer for him. He's going to read a statement from Gail Ward from Disabled People Against Cuts. Let's hear it for John. Thank you, thank you. Um, I've got a message here from Gail Ward, Disabled People Against the Cuts. Uh, she was invited to speak today. She says, thank you for inviting me today. Sorry I can't be here in person due to an accident. Disabled people against the cuts, North East, stand in solidarity with those who support our welfare state and our beloved NHS. Disabled people against the cuts have supported our doctors and nurses on the streets and in their work. Disabled people are high users of NHS and we are determined it should remain free at the point of need. Many lives are saved daily thanks to the wonderful people who work in the NHS, often working long hours, often unappreciated by their bosses. We cannot allow this to continue where greedy profiteers gain over those who work and who use this wonderful service, which is the envy of the world. This is the one service that needs its own life support. And thank you to those who work in it and who do best by it. DPAC will always be behind you, fully supporting an NHS free at a point of use. And that's from Gail Ward, Disabled People Against the Cuts. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the biggest issues around health in uh, current times, as people will probably recognise, is mental health. Mental health is a scourge of modern times, and I'm thinking, I don't think there's any real question that it's, uh, it's, 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 it's connected to the austerity that we've been suffering under the Tories for the last eight years. So, please give a big round of applause to our next speaker, who is a trainee mental health nurse at Northumbria University. She's also a member of our North East People's Assembly Against Austerity. Emma Britton, give her a big round of applause, please. Hello. Um, as Sony's mentioned, my name's Emma, and I'm with the People's Assembly Against Austerity, who stands for taking back public services like the NHS back under democratic public control, and now the hands of those who seek to profit from their privatisation, which is me. Uh, but myself, as mentioned, I'm a student mental health nurse here at Northumbria, where I can tell you that the sense of dread on campus is palpable. But more importantly, on placements, I've seen for myself the devastating effect of austerity on the most vulnerable in our society, in the most harrowing of circumstances. It's, not, it's sickeningly uh, commonplace to see people who are at risk placed on 12, sometimes 18 month waiting lists for support that they desperately, desperately need. As student nurses, we are urged to promote public health wherever possible, and I see no greater threat to public health than the creeping privatisation of the NHS by this morally repugnant government. Thank you very much for being here, really appreciate it. Right, next is Roger Nettleship from the St. Tyneside Hospital campaign. And as you've heard, sometimes it feels like we keep campaigning, we come out on the streets, we talk to people and we get nowhere. We must remember, particularly in the week of um, International Women's Day, that they told the suffragettes that they'd never win, and they did. A lot more campaigning to do, but we have to keep going. Roger is one of the tireless campaigners for the NHS. Roger Nettleship from Save Out South Africa. Thanks very much. Um, I'd like to uh, thank you all for coming out in this weather. It's absolutely brilliant to have a, a march for the NHS this Saturday in the rain. And I'd also like to first, this um, Emily Law Buck spoke on behalf of the campaign earlier on, so I'm not going to say very much. In fact, what I, she spoke brilliantly about what the uh, fight is being taken up, both locally and nationally. But I think it's very important to say that yesterday, just as she mentioned the decision yesterday, but yesterday the Joint Health Scrutiny Committee referred the decision to downgrade our hospital to the Secretary of Health. And this means we can take 
the battle to Westminster where it belongs and I think that's our next project. We're all going to get behind going to Westminster to lobby Parliament as part of our campaign to save these services. Um, the decision they took was brilliant. They took it on the basis of that it was predetermined and the inadequacy of the consultation. Secondly, not in the best interest of the health service. Amazing, isn't it? Not in the best interest of the health service. How can their decision be ignored? And members of the committee, both from South Tyneside and Sunderland, made some very important and damning criticisms, showing how deeply they had looked at the evidence. Uh, how the proposals, the CCG, to decimate our health service in South Tyneside would have a huge impact on Sunderland as well. So a very big thank you to them. Many of them are here, I've seen one or two of them here. So a very big thank you to them. I'd also like to thank our solicitors. They're not here, I don't think they may be, but um, they wrote to the CCG uh, before it made a decision and had taken uh, um, advice from council and they told the CCG straight away that any decision to downgrade these services on the basis of this consultation was unlawful. They ignored it or they're going to suffer the consequences because we are building a crowd fund to fund our judicial review in South Tyneside. So I think uh, we want everyone in South Tyneside and we know people throughout the North East have been supporting us as well and indeed throughout the country. So we'd like to thank everyone in South Tyneside. I'd like to give a big thanks to Gemma Taylor, our coordinator, Marion Langley, who is the uh, branch chair, uh, the chair of the staff side and uh, branch secretary of Unison. Dave Donahue is also uh, branch secretary of Unite, who's um, uh, also from, oh, sorry, regional secretary, of, uh, regional chair of Unite, but he's also prominent in our campaign. So we'd like to find everyone, and as Emma says, I'd like to add my voice to, to what she said about our very brave, brave, brave nurses and clinicians who are standing up and fighting every day to defend the services, and they're a model for everyone to follow. And I'd also like to give a mention to our councillors and MPs who have come up with the goods, who are supporting the campaign, and are taking every, making every effort to actually stop these uh, downgrading our hospital going ahead. So now we prepare to take the battle forward. We'll take the fight to Westminster. We're preparing to fight on the legal front. So we need to fight, all of us, to take control of decisions. We have a right to access to these vital services in our towns and district hospitals. These are our hospitals, our NHS, our workplaces. Let's fight together for a direction for society that recognises and guarantees the future of our NHS. Thank you very much. We can have a Roger membership in the South Tyneside campaign. Roger mentioned the clinicians, the doctors, the nurses, and we know that the NHS is something that we want from the cradle to the grave. A, 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 a faction that we haven't mentioned yet today, and this is, I want you to a big, big round of applause because they weren't able to be with us, but these are the Royal College of Midwives. The midwives get us off the cradle and get us fighting to fight for our, our NHS. So big, big, big uh, a round of applause for them. Our next speaker is for another local campaign from the same North Tyneside NHS campaign. Please give a big round of applause for William Jarrett. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, friends and comrades, thank you so much for the support that we're receiving in all the campaigns across the region. St. North Pineside NHS was initiated by members of the Socialist Party and the National Shop Stewards Network, drawing on strong support from labour lots, independent socialists, trade unionists, service users, and most importantly, NHS workers. We thank you in particular, those of us who work in the health service, non-clinical and clinical, we're all under attack by this government hard-right cronies. We can echo the words of experiences of health workers from across the region, that there is a climate of bullying and intimidation. Most of all, worst of all, now this attack that's being scathingly launched on us by this government, determined to see us backed up against the wall even further, deprived, stressed out, burned out and frustrated, whilst we prop up a service that is failing by design. North Pineside NHS scored a victory. 
We delayed the plans of the CCG to cut, close, and eventually, if they could, privatize our walk-in centers until November. We still have time to fight because of the profile of our campaign, how active and visible we've been, the support we've received from Keep Out NHS Public Northeast, and health campaigns together Northeast. We're happy to deliver that very solidarity in return, tangible support. What we need, however, is the Labour Party Labour left socialist government determined to stop wholly owned subsidiaries, to chew me back in house all those workers who are non clinical, who are being used by the likes of Carillion and private companies, and indeed by trusts that are keeping us in the dark, underpaid, and hiring in on worse terms and conditions. The derisory and insulting pay offer, although the unions, the 14 of them, task us to to accept, to accept that they may not be final, the details of which we don't know for certain, is unacceptable. Organized, concerted strike action will not only save NHS workers, it'll save the health service. If anyone thinks we're going to tolerate another attack on us, they're mistaken. We will hold to account bureaucrats and leaders of unions, just like we're holding to account CCGs and trusts. There will be no acceptance of compromise cuts and closures. We'll work together and we'll save this health service. And talking about those who should be supporting this campaign, we've got a message from Sharon Hodgson, the MP for Washington and Sunderland South, and Shadow Minister for Public Health. The founding principles of our NHS was that it was available, free at the point of use for all. As Shadow Health Minister, I know only too well how the Tories have eroded these principles over the years, and know that they will continue to do so until it is unrecognisable. That is why it's important we come to get together, be it Labour Party members, trade unionists, NHS campaigners and supporters to fight to protect our NHS from the Tories' privatisation agenda. And Sharon, as public, as Shadow Minister for Public Health, will hold you responsible and all of your other colleagues in the Labour Party. We expect you to stand up and to fight for our NHS and to repeal the 2012 Health and Social Care Act. I actually left the North East to go and work in Oxford for several years and it became very apparent in 2005 and 6 that mass privatisation was happening down there. When I first came back to the, the North East in 2007, it was quite difficult to convince people up here that any of that was happening. Now we've got real cuts happening. You've heard about South Tyneside. We've now got to speak of uh, David McKechnie from the Save Rossby Hospital campaign. Hello. 18 months ago, Rossby Community Hospital was closed by the CCG on the pretext of saving money. Yet this same government made, gave the DUP a billion pounds for support. How many hospitals could that money have supported? Since then, Katie Scott has led the Save Rothbury Community Hospital campaign team fighting these cuts. And five months ago, the Northumberland County Council Scrutiny Committee referred the decision of the CCG to the Secretary of State. We are still waiting, five months later, for action from the Independent Reconfiguration Panel. We're hoping for a full review. The Save Rothbury Community Hospital campaign team send love, hope, strength and solidarity to you all. Some of us are physically here with you today, but most of us are leading a local march and demonstration in Rothbury. Keep fighting, keep smiling, justice is on our side. We will win. Power to the NHS, no to privatisation. From Katie Scott and the Save Rothbury Com Community Hospital campaign team. Thank you. Thank you, David. Save Rothbury campaign are actually having a march themselves today. Go and have a look at their Facebook page and give them some support. Our next speaker is another Keep Our NHS public group, the newly formed Sunderland group. Please give a big round of applause for Dr. Pam Wortley from Sunderland. Thank you. Hi. Sunderland and District Keep Our NHS public group was launched in January. What took us so long? 
Actually, most of us have been working with the Save South Tyneside Hospital campaign to stop the transfer, transfer of those vital services from South Tyneside Hospital to Sunderland, which will be extremely damaging and potentially dangerous for South Tyneside residents and will massively overload Sunderland, making these unsafe too. Both public and staff views have been completely ignored but you've heard about the scrutiny committee that's referred this appalling decision to the Secretary of State. The only problem is that's Jeremy Hunt. But anyway, we will continue with this unjust fight. In Sunderland, we are also concerned about the plan to introduce an MCP, a multi-specialty community provider. The jargon just gets more incredible. It's supposed to be a new approach, joining up out of hospital healthcare health and care services. Of course, NHS and social services staff have been working together for years before the cuts and the fragmentation of services which were made worse by the Coalition's 2012 Health and Social Care Act when competition replaced cooperation and privatisation was encouraged. Our cash-strapped local authority Funding for social care cut by over 37% is refusing to put its budget into this MCP. Our local hospitals have also withdrawn support. But the plan is charging ahead. And this single massive 10-year MCP contract to run all out-of-hospital services, including GPs and community services, will be irresistible to private contractors and the likes of Virgin. Government claims these commercial contracts are needed for the joined up services we all want. In reality, they will destroy our NHS. The costs of privatisation, estimated at 4.5 billion per year, are equivalent to 10 specialist hospitals, 175,000 extra nurses, or over 43,000 extra GPs. The example of Carillion shows why the NHS should be restored to be publicly owned, publicly planned and funded through taxation. The NHS crisis is a crisis of this government making and government choice. Our NHS is not unaffordable or unsustainable. It is underfunded and under-resourced. The UK has the sixth world's, world's sixth largest economy, but its spending on healthcare is the lowest of the G7 countries. We were able to afford a decent NHS and a welfare state after the Second World War when we had no money. Of course, there's always plenty of money for war. So what can we do about this dreadful state of affairs? Join KOMP and campaign with your local group like ours in Sunderland. Check out our Facebook page. Come to the public meeting on Friday the 23rd of March in the council chamber at 7 o'clock with Sharon Hodgson, Shadow Minister for Public Health, and Stephanie Dunn from the RCN and David Donoghue from Year Night. Help defend our NHS. It's our NHS. It's our right. My name's Rachel, I'm a nurse, I'm a patient of, of, of the NHS, and I'm a member of People on NHS Public North East based in Tyneside. I think everyone said this message, but I'm going to say it again. The main message we want to get across today is that this is the time that we all need to take action in whatever way we can to save our NHS. There has never been a time in the history of the NHS where its future has been so desperate and everything it stands for is being dismantled and eroded. As we all know from our, all these amazing speakers and what we're all doing, our country is rapidly moving towards a future where the NHS will be run by private companies, ACOs, Virgin Healthcare, whose main aim is to make profit. And as we know, this is how the American healthcare system is run. A country where life expectancy is reducing, inequality is increasing, most people can't afford cancer care, and most doctors would rather work in a system like ours. <laughs> These changes are complex and happening silently, hidden behind abbreviations and seductive terminology. And on the surface, most people think nothing has changed. Every day I speak to patients and no one has a clue what is happening. As we know, this could not be further from the truth. 
to save our NHS, we all need, we need as many people as we can to understand what is really happening and to take action. Obviously everyone here is motivated and doing things, but we need more people to get involved. We've got a good website, Keep Our NHS Public, there's the national one and there's a local one, North East. It tries to clarify what's really happening. There's links to some great films, blogs, books, and there's uh, suggestions on what actions you can take, what petitions you can sign, contacting your local MP. We all need, we need this subject to come alive. So please, we need to talk to as many people as we can, family and friends. You can also join our group. We welcome all of you. We meet every six weeks in the Brunswick Methodist Church and we uh, help to organise events like this. What we're campaigning for is a cash injection to restore the NHS budget, a commitment to increase funding each year and an end to the cap on NHS pay, the abandonment of the plans for further cuts or cash-driven closures for the NHS services and hospitals. Number three, a halt to the imposition of these new models of care and accountable care. And it's been said many times before, a repeal of the 2012 Health and Social Care Act, which means reinstating the NHS as a public service, publicly accountable, publicly funded and publicly owned. What is happening is outrageous and will affect all our lives and the lives of our children and grandchildren. It's being presented as inevitable. We do not have to accept this. We can stop it. We can save our NHS. Who's on NHS? <laughs> Who's on NHS? Woo, thank you. Who's on NHS? Thank you, Rachel. Fantastic. Well done. As has already been mentioned earlier uh, this afternoon, um, the University and College Union, the big banner over there, the, the lecturers, some of their lecturers are on strike at the moment over attacks on their pension schemes. That is all part of the privatisation and it's all part of the cuts agenda of this Tory government. So it's with real pleasure that we were able to announce the UCU Newcastle branch this week actually passed a motion, supported today's march and rally. They gave us a lot of support. We were able to go down to their picket line earlier this week and give out leaflets to build for this de this demonstration today so please put your a, a big warm welcome please to John Bryan from the UCU he's a, a regional support officer thank you John Bryan thank you thank you very much Tony um, and solidarity greetings from the University and College Union to this rally and to everyone who is on the march and to everyone who's here today to listen to all the speeches I want to say thank you to all of those people who have actually been down to our picket lines over the last couple of weeks. As Tony said, we're in a massive fight. UCU members at Newcastle University and Durham University and universities around the country, 64 in total, are on strike for our pensions. Our pensions are likely to see a reduction of £10,000 a year in retirement and we don't think that's acceptable and that's why we're taking strike action. We've already taken nine days of action so far and we've got five days of action. Every day next week, UCU members, Newcastle University and Durham University are on strike and we need your support in that fight. It's UCU members who educate, who train and teach the medical staff of the future. And I think it was very fitting that the march today started at the medical school at Newcastle University. And that's where we've been on the picket lines this week. And thank you to all those people who've come, who've come down. In spite of all the changes that have taken place with the Trade Union Act that have made it difficult for us to take strike action, we were able to get 90% of people voting for strike action at Newcastle University and Durham University. I think that's a testament that we can fight changes that are, changes that are implemented to try and stop us from taking action. We would far rather be in the lecture theatres, far rather be in the labs, we'd far rather be in the seminar rooms, but this week we're going to be out on the picket lines and we want your support. Thank you for inviting me to speak and, and tell you about our campaigns. Newcastle University, Durham University, out all next week. We're out until we win. Thank you very much. Thank you, support them in their struggles. I've got a message from Wendy Taylor, Lib Dem and Councillor on Newcastle City Council. 
We strongly support integration of health and social care, but have concerns about how proposed new models of care would operate and would oppose competitive tendering for an ACO. Where local services can work together to improve patient care, this should be encouraged, but should never lead to an increase in privatisation. I'm really, really pleased to be able to introduce our next speaker, uh, Chi um, Onuara. Chi's the local MP, and for me, was very much one of the new generation of Labour MPs that from when she was elected, stood up and actually spoke on behalf of keeping the NHS public, so, which some of her predecessors were less keen to do. She's been a tireless supporter of our campaign. She's come from a manifesto meeting to speak here, and we're really grateful to have her support. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you so much, everyone is here. You know what this reminds me of? Reminds me when we welcomed Jeremy Corbyn at Gateshead. 10,000 people in the rain here for that disastrous general election called by Theresa May where we showed that there is, people do have a vision for the future and Jeremy saw how the North East in Newcastle supports as wants a progressive future. So I mean it was raining then, it's not raining now but it's so great to have so many people here. And I also say that I was out on the UCU picket line about two weeks ago when it was snowing and it was warm because of the, of the passion for education of the UCU College uh, Union member. So I wanted to pay tribute to them as well. But I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't on the march. Um, that was because, as I said, I was launching Labour's local election manifesto um, in Heaton. And they've all gone door knocking, but I wanted to come here. Um, I was launching it with Angela Rayner, our Shadow Secretary of State for Education, who was doing such a fantastic job. And she is working on a national education service, which will provide free education from the cradle to the grave. Now that, of course, is based on our national health service, the greatest achievement of the Labour government so far. And it remains Labour's proudest moment. Do you agree? Yes! yes. yes. I need a bit of noise. Sorry, I'm told not everyone can hear me. I just need to, I need to hear some noise. Do we agree that Labour's proudest moment is the NHS? Yes! And that is because, it's because of NHS staff. And I want to take this chance to say thank you to everyone who works in the NHS. And that's doctors, that's nurses, it's the care staff, it's the orderlies, it's the porters, it's the cleaners, everyone who's in the NHS. So we have a cheer for everyone who's in the NHS. And for all they do, despite all the assaults on their pay in their working conditions by the Tories. I mean, the idea of nurses using food banks. We have the biggest food bank in the country. I'm not proud of that. I'm proud of the Georgies that help make it work. But I'm not proud that in this country, we have a system that means that nurses have to go to food banks to make ends meet. That is obscene. We should all be ashamed of it. It is a scandal. But I tell you what, for the Tories, it's just business as usual. Because let's be absolutely clear, you know, I mean, I'm losing count of the number of times we've had to march for the NHS. But we have to keep on doing it because this is part of a plan. The plan is underfund the NHS, privatise bits of it, let competition in, and then the NHS will be so undermined, so, so, so powerless that it will lose its place in people's hearts and they can set it all off. That is the plan, to under-resource it so that people say it's better off in the private sector. But are we ever going to say that the NHS is better off in the private sector? 
the only way for the NHS to work, to fulfill the dream and the vision of its founders, to be the NHS that we need, is to keep it public, to keep it entirely public. There are some things the market cannot do in guaranteeing the health of poor people is one of them. So what we have to say today, what we need to say day in, day out, is the NHS needs to be public, it needs to be for the people, and it needs to be in the public, in the people's hands. And that's what I'm here to say. I also want to say that you know, in Newcastle we have great hospitals. We're really lucky. We have great hospitals in the northeast. We have some of the worst health comes, outcomes in the country. And the reason for that is because we have some of the highest levels of poverty in the country. And the NHS needs to be properly funded so that it doesn't matter whether you're born in West Gosford or Walker, you live the same amount of years. Right now there's a 15 year life gap between if you're way, depending on where you're born, and that isn't fair, and that is what a Labour government will change. Um, so I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to keep you longer. I just want to, say, I just want to assure you that now spoken to Jeremy Corbyn about that. This, you should know that in, with the Labour Party, we are absolutely committed. Firstly, to funding the NHS properly, and secondly, to keeping it. But I can't say keeping it public because so much of it is private now. So I'll just say making it public again, uh, and that includes, just to say, that includes the um, GP. In, in Newcastle, GP services are closing because they're having to be tended for, contracted for every few years. We've got to change the whole system of contracting in the NHS to make sure that it is public. And I suppose the final message is, like I said, I can't remember. Does anyone count how many marches we've had to save the NHS since the Tories came to power? Too many, that is right, too many. I mean, I think I've marched about at least 10 times. But we've got to keep on doing it. You know, a Labour government will change things, but we can't, you know, and hopefully we'll, we will see the back of this government soon. But we've got to show them that the NHS is not theirs for the taking. It is ours, and we are going to fight for it. Uh, I think Nai Bevin said that he wanted, with the bedpan fell in, you know, he wanted it to echo in Whitehall. That doesn't happen anymore because there are so many layers of different organisations, NHS England, CCGs, all the different contractors. We're going to change that. We're going to put responsibility for the NHS back where it deserves, in the heart of our government, a Labour government, and that is what will make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chi. Thank you. It's fantastic to know that our message today in Newcastle is going to be going back to Westminster to Jeremy Corbyn and hopefully all the way to Jeremy Hunt and, and Theresa May as well to say, who's in HS? It's a simple message. No cuts, no closures, no privatisation. It's fantastic that we have our MPs coming down to represent us and to, to be some part of this support. And it's also fantastic that so many of them are women as well that, that we've had here today. We've just got a couple of more messages from two more of our local MPs. And then we've got the fantastic Bethany Ellen Coyle and Ron Brown here going to do a couple of songs to warm you up a bit and get you ready for going over the road. Those of you are going to go over for the, um, the question and answer session at Brunswick. So this is a message from Mary. Glendon, MP for North Tyneside. She says, best wishes to everyone taking part in the North East March and Rally for the NHS today. It's great that so many campaign groups, unions, politicians and members of the public are supporting the rally today, but it's sad that as the NHS turns 70, the rally cry has to be, no cuts, no closures, no privatisation. All we have seen from the government are cuts to funding, closures of hospitals and departments, failures to meet treatment targets and the real threat of privatisation with the move towards accountable care organisations. Today's show of strength sends a clear message to the government that it may do its best to destroy the NHS, but we won't let it succeed, will we? Our NHS! Who's NHS? Thank you, everybody. Here's Dr Helen Drew to give our last few messages. One from Mary McKinnell, uh, sorry, Catherine McKinnell, MP for Newcastle North. 
The NHS is one of our country's greatest achievements and I know that a properly funded, publicly owned health service is one of the top priorities for my constituents. Yet under this government, our health and social care services have been stretched to breaking point after years of underfunding, totally unnecessary reorganisations and the failure to recruit, retrain, retain and properly pay staff. It's simply not acceptable to rely on the goodwill of a dedicated workforce to keep our NHS running. And there's been a lot of dedication this winter and throughout uh, many years. But that is clearly the basis on which it's currently operating. I would like to say thank you to everyone who works in the NHS across, across the North East for everything that they do. They deserve much better than this. That's from, from uh, Catherine McKinnon. So we've got lots and lots of thanks. This event has been people powered. No budget, but please go to the website if any of you would like to consider giving us some money. We want to thank Unite for printing leaflets, Newcastle Wood Recycle on Welbeck Road for the wood for the placards. We want to reuse them, so please leave them here at, at Brunswick where you're very welcome to come and get a warm drink. To Logo Bear on Clayton Street for printing uh, support with printing t-shirts. To the Samba Bands, Best Valley Samba drummed in North Tyneside. For Louise, Gareth and Martin for our role plays. To our actors who turned up because both the role players and Stephen Com Tompkinson and Dennis Lawson really brought the press out. To Ian and John for our photography. For Andy and Dan for video work. Matthew and all of the stewards. For all of you for turning up on a rainy day. And a special thank you to John Wally who is just amazing. 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 Yes, today, we, all those groups have organised today, but today wouldn't have happened without John Wally, who's been absolutely tireless in getting everything organised and, and attention to details. But another big round of applause, please, to John. And just to get you warmed up, for the, just remember there is going to be a question and answer session with Keith Venables and the Health Campaigns Together campaign over at Brunswick right after this. But, but definitely. Sorry? Yes. Keith, him. Uh, but to finish off, Bethany Ellen Coyle and Ron Brown are going to get us a bit musical to sing us a few songs. Hello. Hi. So this next song I'm going to sing you, um, we sang, or we performed here last year at the NHS rally, and now I've recorded it, and it's available online. All proceeds, all money, all income um, goes to the Save South Townside Hospital campaign. You can see that that and keep our NHS public. So please, uh, if you want to support the campaign, buy the track. We ready? I might have to do the, I'll do this acapella. For the pharmacists and dispensary staff administering prescriptions to the dermatologists to ease us when we're itching from the doctors and GPs who heal our cancer and our sneezes to the physiotherapists advancements in the disease we thank you we praise you you are our NHS From the porters and the drivers who transport us every day The paramedics emergency teams who help us on our way The psychologists and counsellors supporting when we're down The physiotherapists who help us move around We thank you, we praise you, you are our NHS We'll celebrate and advocate, fight for you till the end from the midwife and neonatal teams who birth and ten new life The surgeons and anaesthetists helping under the knife The managers and engineers who keep the wheels a turning The estate staff and administrators who keep the cogs a churning We thank you, we praise you, you are our NHS We'll celebrate and advocate, fight for you till the end the rheumatologist and the osteopaths who ease our aching bones. The 99101 staff offer us ports of gold. The dentist, hygienist, technicians helping us to smile. You'll never be replaced by the NHS online. We thank you, we praise you. You are our NHS. We'll celebrate and advocate, fight for you till the end. From 
the support staff and auxiliaries who help us wash and bath. Let's hear it for the clown doctors who make the children laugh. The cardiologists who keep our hearts a ticking. The cooks, the KP's canteen staff that make us all wet dinner. We thank you, we praise you, you are our NHS. We'll celebrate and advocate, fight for you till the end. From the geneticists, technologists, urologists and PTS. Nurses, sisters, therapists, radiographers, orthopists, prosthetists and podiatrists, technologies and OTs, to the workers on the wards who bring us cups of tea. We thank you, we praise you, you are.